one of the most important things to understand when you're transitioning from Adobe Illustrator to Adobe After Effects is how keyframes work. Keyframes, I've got a couple examples here that I'll kind of relate it to things that you might understand if you're coming from Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop. Keyframes are changes over time. And basically it's a point in which it changes. Let me show you what I mean. So think about keyframes in the same way that you think about color stops in your gradient. Now I'm going to pull this panel out here and stretch it out so that we can see what's going on. This isn't normally the way that you look at this panel, but it'll help you understand. Now you notice that we have color stops, every major change, and what happens in between those color stops is it gradiates, right? Or it changes from one stop to the next stop. And that's, that's how color stops work. If I move these color stops closer together, that change happens more rapidly. If I move them further apart, that change happens more slowly. Now I say slowly and rapidly, it's all happening at the same time, um, but it's, we're, we're talking about space, right? And so ask yourself a couple things. What happens to the left of the first keyframe on your gradient? What happens to the left of the first color stop on your gradient? There is no change. It continues to stay red. And it's red because there's nothing for it to change to because it has to go from a color stop to a color stop. Now let's look at how this works on an After Effects timeline. Now here, instead of controlling things over space or traveling across uh, you know, a period of space, we see it happening over time. And so if you watch and I take this scrubber, here is all red. But watch the circle as I go from this keyframe over to this keyframe. Now this keyframe is yellow, and this keyframe is red, and it changes over time. So as I press play and it goes through, you will see that shape rotate through those keyframes and what it's doing in between each keyframe is tweening is tweening so a gradient is much like a tween right from keyframe to keyframe are the major changes and in between those changes the computer just tweens or decides what happens in between those now the same thing will happen if i move this keyframe closer to the other keyframe then you will notice that that transition happens quicker. Notice how it just snaps. And you'll see that it just fast, it goes really quickly. I can do that to all of these. If I put them all very close together, I'll highlight them all and hold Alt and click and drag and shrink them up. You'll notice that that, key, that um, tween or animation happens extremely quickly. You can slow that down by separating them. So if I took them like this, and held Alt again and pulled them apart, okay, then that tween is going to happen much, much slower. Okay, now over here back in Illustrator, if I were to take this particular color stop and move it in between, you will notice that that change now happens in between, right? That makes sense. I drug the blue color over in between. I can do the same thing with this keyframe. So if I have this keyframe and I drag it in between, then you will see that down here it's showing that and now it goes to blue before it goes to yellow. And so that's how that works. Okay, um, I can also copy and paste keyframes. And so if I want it to stay yellow for a particular period of time or stay red, I can come over here and I can grab this red and let's take this one, drag it over here, and I want the same red over here. Now, this isn't at the end, but what's going to happen from red to red? Well, it stays the same. What happens is it stays the same because it's technically changing from this color stop to this color stop, but because the properties of each color stop are exactly the same, if we look at this, double click here. You can see that I've got 25500 on my RGB. Double click here, 
25500. So this is technically changing in between these two things, but because it's changing from the same thing to the same thing, there's no visible change. And so what that actually does is it just spreads out that thing. And so we can do that here as well. If I take this red and I move it over here like this, and then I move my scrubber, and I copy, that's selected, Command C to copy, Command V to paste, you will notice that there is now no change in between there over time. And so we get yellow, blue, purple, red for a while, and then purple, right? And so it kind of fades through that, but it stays right there. And so that's kind of how that works. One last thing that I want to explain that will help, uh, help you understand how keyframes work. Let me put this back so that these match. Oh, this blue is probably over here. Okay, so that's basically what we have on the other one, right? We've got these keyframes. We'll spread these out a little bit. Okay. And so one other thing that is helpful to understand is how the blend tool works in um, Illustrator. And so let's get out of a keyframe here. And I'm going to create a square. And I'll start with a circle. Okay, and let's make this just one color. I'm just going to make it blue. Okay, and we go from blue. I'm going to take this, drag it across, and let's actually just create a new one. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a square. And I'm going to make this square be red. Okay, and now if I highlight both of these and go to Object, blend make object blend blend options and let's just look at specified steps and let's just look at like two or three let's see what three gives us let's go two just for distance sake here okay so what we have here is we are blending or technically tweeting over space rather than over time between this blue circle and this red square. And so from blue to red, we get a color tween. Blue, kind of a muted purple, it gets a little bit closer to red and then it turns red. But we're also tweening that shape. We're going from a circle and then you see, see that circle start to round out uh, or, or kind of start to get a little bit more square. They're still quite round and then get a little sharper and then you see it become that square. Now, if I take this shape here and I move it, you'll see that it begins to tween between those things. I can adjust this shape as well, okay? And it will give us the steps or in between. Now, what happens if I do the same thing with this circle? So let's say that I make this circle. Let's get rid of these color changes. And we're just gonna keep our blue, okay? Now, no, no, uh, changes because we're going from one keyframe to nothing and so we'll just retain the properties of that but I'm also going to point out that you can use these keyframes on any attributes or properties um, of anything in After Effects and so if I want to come in here and I want to take this shape okay and I can grab this and I can use my pen tool okay and then that's the path, but now I actually need to rotate it. And so I'm going to click on it. Oop, let's zoom out there. Holy cow, there we go. Okay, so we'll click on this whole thing and we'll rotate it. Okay, and now over time, you see that it changes right before your eyes, but instead of changing in steps, like it does in, after, in Illustrator, it changes in the timeline over time, like it does in After Effects. And so those are the two main things that you need to understand with um, keyframes, is that instead of things changing over space, they change over time, and how they work. You can drag them, delete them, but they are considered to be a change in property of a thing, right? And so, here we've got color and shape, but over here in After Effects, 
you have any number of things. And so if we go back into our circle, um, not only do you have the size and the position, so another thing that you can do, where we take the position, for example, we'll move this guy over here like that, set a keyframe, move them, oh, yeah, we'll leave them over here like this, you move down the timeline, set a keyframe, and it will move. During that time, we can scale it. So we'll add a keyframe, come over here, let's make it smaller. And then you'll notice that in between those two attributes, there's two different sets of keyframes. It's bigger and smaller and it moves. And we can do lots of things. We can change the opacity. So we'll come here like this, set a keyframe, go to the next one. Take it down to that, and you'll notice that it gets more and less opaque between those. And so that's tweening and keyframes on a timeline in Adobe After Effects compared to things that you might understand in Adobe Illustrator. There will be more transitions from AI to AE on Illatalk. I am Corey Kerr, and you can follow my stuff at coreykerr.com. Make sure you subscribe, and all my information is in the description of this video.